Like, I was kind of prioritizing things like menials such as like lighting and how to like work this camera, but like I, I needed to make the model first. Now I'm in three dimensions, so I'm taking something in two dimensions and I'm, when I'm rotating around something else, you've got three dimensions. Hard, it's hard for kids to visualize that. Like put shapes in and like moved them around and like added points and like sculpted things and I started doing stuff that I didn't even know you could do. The problem with working in 2D is that um, you can see, for example, aspects right and left, but you cannot see what happens in the other dimension. So we talk about up, down, in, out, that type of thing, right and left. And it's very difficult to do when you're only talking about two dimensions. Before this, I was into PowerPoint, which is all like 2D, but worrying about another dimension. That it's, it's so confusing. Math is an integral part of uh, virtual reality. The, the program that the kids learn is Blender, and they quickly discover that um, you know, calculus, algebra, there's all kinds of math involved once you want to start getting detailed. A lot of people weren't familiar with any of the aspects of 3D programming. We work with Blender, and uh, that, that was a big step. Uh, we had one student uh, tell us once that uh, I'm a good math student. He said, until I got into 3D virtual reality, I never really understood the z-axis. I got the x and the y, but until I see something three-dimensional, I don't understand the z-axis. And so here are students who are, maybe aren't in honors geometry, but are actually working at a very high level with uh, three-dimensional coordinate systems and uh, x, y, and z axes. This is like z axis. I'm in, like, using the z axis and I'm rotating it. It's a pretty savvy understanding of transformations because uh, you not have to just recognize them, but you have to almost really understand how they work and be able to apply them. It's all from this cube, same exact cube, I just can like add points like this and then do this, just move points around until it's like shaped how I want it to. I, th I see them trying to um, take an object and rotating it around an axis. I'm trying to create a sphere that you rotate it around and it becomes a whole sphere and now I'm animating it so where it'll duplicate some of it so it'll stay as one big sphere when it's done. To, to do a rotation that creates a sphere you can take a semicircle and place it up against an axis or kind of a pole and I would literally take that semicircle and just spin it around the pole or that axis leaving a, a trail as it spun around that pole or axis that would create the sphere. To do a cone, I would approach it the same way. I would start with a, uh, a right triangle, put it against my pole, and uh, I would rotate my triangle around that pole again. Um, that would fill up an area that looks like a cone. To create a cylinder, I would take a rectangle, similar to a flag, stuck on a flagpole, and I would actually take that flag and just rotate it, drag it around the pole. It's gonna fill up an area that would be a cylinder. Well, hyperbolas, parabolas, you can rotate those things, and again, they're very hard to, to visualize. I went to my math teacher, and I talked to her and asked her if we did anything 3D in calculus during the year. And she told me that later in the year, we were going to be studying 3D graphs and how to find the area of 3D graphs. The first one I did is just this standard parabola. The formula for this particular parabola is just x squared equals y. And if you take a parabola and rotate it about the x-axis all the way around, you get this sort of shape. The, the, the coolest thing is to see what they've done on their own and what they've taught themselves on their own and what they're actually doing and what they're making the software do. Working with it and learning like how to 
like critique and just like makes things better through 3D. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's just interesting and I like teaching myself. I think this is a career I might want to follow. The proof is in the pudding. It's it's in their product that they produce at the end. And to get to that end finished product, they've had to do some pretty good math to get it done. So like this button called two side. Oh, and what it does, it'll take like that, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Now.